the heck y'all doing today? What's going on? Well, the, we came over here to our rented land place uh, this morning, and it's now 1.30. Been playing in the rain. It's been raining. Just kind of patching up on the crowls here so that we can get the cows loaded up. Yeah, she's wet. The old felty, he got soaked pretty hardcore. Mm, so... I'm uh, just going to turn you around and give you an idea of, you can see the water on the side of the road, so on and so forth. And that's why I didn't bring you guys along for when we, uh, for when we're patching on the crowls or anything. Because with it so wet, I just said to hell with it. Talk to you here on the way home. Anywho. How much rain we're going to get here today, I have no idea, but the plan is to haul cows home on Thursday. That's that's the plan. So, anywho, what's happening for the rest of today, I'm uh, not 100% sure. We'll, don't know, get home, we'll have some lunch, and we'll go from there. So, anyway, we'll talk to you guys all later, and if something comes up, I'll bring you for the ride. If not, we'll catch you all tomorrow. See you then. Alrighty, guys, there it is. First fire. Just fired her up. Uh, what am I using for wood right now? Just some old friggin' 2x6 that was on the corral that we cut up last fall. It's been sitting in the shop. But CP got all done. Uh, she did all the grout. She did all the cleaning. She uh, put a sealer, grout sealer on. Two coats of grout sealer. And so <clears throat> we've got our trim band up here. Underneath that where this dual pipe. There. Where the dual pipe is connected to the chimney adapter smoke pipe adapter which is inside the pot that's got it's all screwed in with three screws and then the expanding chimney is screwed with three screws see that right there there's another one right there uh, according to northern fireplace in regina they don't put the screws in down here where I'm going to turn the light on. It's kind of dark. Where uh, dual pipe is being used. And we got dual, dual piping. So dual wall piping. So the inner part goes inside the stem of the, the stove. And the outer sits on the outside part of it. So, but yeah. Just fired her up. And we'll see how this sucker's going to work. But yeehaw! We got ourselves a wood stove again. It's been a long time coming. We had one in our old home, which uh, actually burnt. And that was a mobile home. But it didn't burn due to a wood stove. It burnt because we had a farmyard fire. And uh, it got our home. And this is the home that we bought and then renoed and here we are still renoing now with a wood stove in but got our extra fireproof wall on all the way around so yeah this should be good anywho i did read in the book where they said it can be a pain in the ass to get your fire to start and yeah it was a little bit of a pain in the ass but then i didn't have very good kindling either so We'll do a burn, then we gotta do a complete cool down. Then we gotta do another burn for a little bit longer, and then a complete cool down. And then we can fire it up and really let her cook. Uh, so, here we are. Anyways, let us know in your comments what you think. Now, as far as carbon monoxide, uh, I've had quite a few guys comment in the comment section that we need to have a carbon monoxide tester put in the house. 
not on a wood burning stove in Canada. It's not required. Um, don't need it. I talked to my insurance agent yesterday and they even have a wood burning stove in their house and they said there's no no such thing here not with any of the write ups that any of the insurance agents or companies that they deal with um none of them require carbon monoxide tester for a wood burning stove so so there you have her in Canada it's not required and she asked me what kind of stove I got I told her she asked me efficiencies blah 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 I gave her all of the specs of the stove because I have them and she said shit with that stove because this is like a dual burn it's got the extra burn tubes you could see them up there in the top those burn tubes up there and it's dual lined and brick lined the whole nine yards 78 percent efficiency on this stove and she said with this particular model it ain't really going to change our insurance at all so piper doug if you're interested in getting the stove in, maybe that, I think you said it was a Richardson stove or something like that. Maybe that stove is not approved for uh, North America. I don't know. Maybe it's too old and you need to upgrade. Because um, I know he's in he's in Canada and he did make a couple comments about having the wood stove and they ended up taking it out of the house because of insurance. But this is a Droulet, or Droulette, D-R-O-L-E-T, right there in the glass. You can see it. Uh, this stove is like 1200 bucks at home hardware, Canadian Tire, so on and so forth. And this is the kind of the middle of the row stove. You can actually buy, Droulette makes even bigger ones. This one is for 800 to 2,000 square foot heating range. So it's got quite a range of uh, heating capacity to her. And when you get these stoves, unfortunately, you have to install them yourself. Because nobody, like Northern Fireplace, Wheatland Fireplace... All of these companies that actually sell wood burning stoves for a living, that's their business. Uh, fireplaces, stoves, so on and so forth. If they don't sell it to you, they won't install it. So, but you do get all the books and all the info and the whole nine yards. And you buy all new chimney and everything else. And it, yeah, it's been. It took us a while to get this sucker installed, but here we are. I I don't see it being much of an issue. Anyways, there you go, guys. Give us your thumbs up, comment, subscribe. Make sure you're hitting that subscriber button. And fun, fun, fun. Let's get her done. There's going to be more on this video probably tomorrow. I'll see what's happening tomorrow, but... What I'm going to do in the future is take all of our video clips on the wood burning stove install. And all of you guys have seen a little bit of it already. But right from beginning stages of building the hearth pad, the few little clips I've got, to installing the chimney and everything else, to getting the tile put on, to the install of the stove here. Alrighty. Anyway, I'll let you all go and we'll talk to you later. Alrighty guys, how's it going now? It's uh, the next day again. And today it's actually really nice. It's just beautiful out. Like it's uh, plus 11 Celsius. The sun is shining nice and bright. CP and I were in the city for the better part of the day already. 
she had doctor's appointments and then we had to return some of that tile so on and so forth and if you look right back there you'll see what I'm doing I just unrolled the slew hay bale and up in front of me he, over here I unrolled one of, another one of them hot bales that uh, that I've been feeding to these cows out here at home I have to take my notice the sunny glasses are gone well I wear glasses prescriptions and those sunny glasses had to go back we had spots all over them on the lenses and it's not supposed to happen so they went back and I'll get those back in a couple weeks but uh, there there's some of that hot bale and here's a lot more of it over this way and yeah it's kind of black but you know what these guys they clean it up pretty goddamn good <laughs> so that cow right there she had she's carrying twins one of them is right there actually that's one of the twins uh, so we've got two sets of twins out here in this pasture I don't know where the other calves are but there's a, another one T1 uh, T2 and then there's oh sorry I lied to you that's not a twin that first one that I pointed out that's not a twin I think the other two are Oh boy, for the life of me off the top of my head, I can't remember the ear tag numbers. But T1 and T2 are both twins. Look at this little brute. And actually, that's a heifer. She's actually pretty fine. She'll be staying home here anyway. So, she looks pretty good. Hey girl. In 56, uh, I believe that's a steer. Yep, that's a steer. So he'll be leaving. But this should this is a heifer, I'm pretty sure. 17. Yep. She's going to be staying. Hey, girl. You're just a chunky little girl, aren't you? 20 isn't... Eh, 20 isn't nearly half the calf of 17 here. But 20 will be staying until spring. And we'll see how she shapes up. Uh, 19. Not sure if that's a steer or a heifer off of one of our new cows that's a heifer she'll be staying there's a few here that are going to be staying 20 was born quite a bit later also Fifty-seven's a steer he'll be leaving and then we got these little squirts over here. They'll all be leaving. I'm pretty sure 37 will leave, but I'll let, let CP make the final decision. 12 over there, I'm pretty sure is a heifer. So yeah, she'll be staying. Orange 12. Those are... Anything with an orange ear tag, like that number 12 right there, they're off of cows that we bought in December. So we decided we're going to keep all the heifers because that's all new blood in the herd, right? She's an Angus, that one. You can tell just the body structure alone is... She's not as long. She's a little boxier. That's a typical Angus trait. Oh yes, that one there. Yellow 68, she's staying. Uh, so, anyways. <coughs> yeah, all of the heifers from the new cows are, are gonna stay and we'll see how they grow up until let's say March-ish. 
and then make our final cut. There's about 15 head we're going to be holding back. So I can pretty much tell you right now of the four or five that I pointed out to you guys right off the top of my head, there's three of them that'll definitely be staying. But anyway, these guys got two bales today, so that'll tide them over for today and tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow we'll be hauling cows home from uh, rented land. So we got to get over and we'll fill up a couple of feeders for those guys. Anyway, we'll bring you back a little bit later. Alrighty guys, so got it. the feeders all filled up, so on and so forth, blah blah blah. Uh, can't really see it for the sunshine, but you can kind of sort of make out a big hill right here. Windows are dirtier than hell from yesterday, but there, now you can make it out better. You can see that big hill? That's all aged manure, like really old, old manure. And I'm working at pushing this manure up. You can see the pile starting from way over there. Comes all the way across to here is where I'm at right now. I still got a little bit more, but I got to move this windbreak and calf shelter. And CP just, just called me and said she needed a hand. But here's the question for you guys. So with all this manure, now this stuff is pretty rich yet. Um, it's only there... Well, from last winter and that's it, right? There's a lot of straw, but there's a ton of organic matter in it. So on that field that I had my gamble crop seeded on and some of our green, green feed oats, the question is, should I spike that field down and then spread this manure on there and then disc it a couple times in? Because I'm planning on spiking it and disking it a couple times regardless. Or, should I spread the manure on first, then spike it deep, deep till it is what I'm looking at doing, and then disk it. So, should the manure go on first before I do any kind of tillage? Or, should I do a little bit of tillage, then put the manure down, and then do more tillage? You guys let me know in your comment section. Um, yeah, I'm kind of curious to see what everybody has to say. I'm going to be talking to uh, a couple of buddies and see what they think. I'm sure I know what the answers are going to be. And timing is going to be a big issue here. i got to close this gate. So yeah, timing will be a big issue on getting this all done too because we haven't been in the field since I blew the bearing in that disc on our rented land. I haven't been back there to finish that field off. Now I only got about four or five hours, but regardless, sometimes you just can't seem to get away from the other things that you've been doing. So anyway... Give us the old thumbs up. And if you're wondering what those bales are, those are bales left over from last year. There's about 30 of them there. Slew hay and basically slew hay type bales. We'll be grinding them down here uh, in the fall. Whoa, dropped ya. Ah. There we go. Anyways. Um, yeah, we'll be grinding them bales in the fall. But. Give us a thumbs up. Comment. Subscribe. And you know the drill. Fun, fun, fun. Let's get her done. We'll catch you all later. I'll bring you along for uh, tomorrow a little bit. For when we're uh, hauling them cows home. Alrighty. See you guys.